Well, up guys, I'm back again. Round three for the day. Uh, early this morning, or earlier this morning, I got the uh, Pac-Man cabinet, pole position. I got the bodywork finished on both of those. They're in the spray booth. I put primer on them earlier this morning. Then I did some more parts for the dually Chevy truck I'm doing, which is on my other channel. And now I am back on the paper boy. I want to get this sanded down with 180 and get it reprimer today, tonight, 7:30 at night. So yeah, tonight. Um, I want to get this done so it can start drying. I had some extra filler left over when I was working on the Chevy dually parts on my other channel, so I came in here and found some pinholes that I had seen, and I figured why not fill them in while I had a chance. I have not sanded the cabinet yet, and then I was looking in here, and if you look, this whole edge looks like crap. It's just all rough. I missed it, never did it. This side's not as bad. But what I'm gonna do is, let's mix up a little bit of that dolphin glaze again, and let's hit those spots. I found two spots on this side too. So let's hit these inside spots, so that while those are drying, I could be sanding the outsides of the cabinet. So we're just gonna get our mixing board out here and uh, get a little bit mixed up. I swear I cleaned this shop two or three times a day. And I do so much stuff in a day that it's just literally nonstop. I get a project done, I clean. I get another project done, I clean. Now I'm getting ready to do this one, and then I'll clean when I'm done. So, turn on this other light here. I showed this in uh, some of the previous videos. It's called Dolphin Glaze by u -Pool. I like these, I'm really liking these bags better than these bottles I've been using in the past because this is a little bit different product. It's called Fantastic Glaze. Same company, just a little bit different of a product. Um, but I like these because I get more of the product out of it than I can out of this bottle unless you cut the bottle open and you scoop it all out and everything. I, I'm pretty happy with how this works. I was a little skeptical at first. I bought them because I bought a case of them, which I think there were six in a case. They were on sale, so I, I went. I figured I'd try these, and, and I like it. I think the stuff works really well. Sands really nice, fills in good. So I'm just kind of rolling it like you would a tube of toothpaste. We don't need a ton, so I don't want to waste a bunch of it. Get this uh, coated. Then I'll get my vacuum and everything out, get the air hose hooked up. And we will start sanding the side down. We're only gonna use 180 grit today because I've gotta put two more coats of primer on the cabinet. The only reason why I put two more coats of primer on the cabinet is I really, really wanna make sure that that um, particle board is sealed up. Now, when I did the pole position cabinet, I don't know that I'm going to have to primer that again or not yet. I won't really know until I sand it down. But because I use that fiberglass resin mixed in the Bondo, um, that pretty much sealed up the particle board. So I'm hoping that I don't have to primer it again, but I might. I don't know yet. So basically, I just, that part of that body filler with the resin kind of acted as a first primering to the cabinet because it sealed up all that particle board. In this case, on the paper boy, I didn't do that. So obviously I'll show you after I put this stuff on, you'll be able to see a little bit of the texture of the particle board and stuff. And that's what, by using that other method, you kind of hide that. I'm just trying to make these cabinets as nice as possible so that they last longer than they already have, which is pretty incredible to be if you think about it. For what these cabinets have gone through in their lifetime, I mean, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, this side's worse than the other for some reason. We will get it. And the other thing is, too, is the sides of this cabinet are completely covered in artwork. But if you don't have really smooth sides and a good painted surface, 
A, your artwork's not gonna wanna stick, and B, look at that, you gotta fix that. It's just flopping around in there. I don't know if that's supposed to sit in there like that. I don't know what that deal is with that. But anyways, um, the smoother your cabinet is, the better your paint job is, the better your artwork's gonna look. If you have rough particle board behind your artwork, it's gonna show through your artwork and it's just not gonna look real good. I see a lot of people do that. They put the artwork right over particle board and then you can see all the imperfections through the artwork. And I don't want that. I don't, I'd rather just spend the extra time and make sure that it's perfect so that I can get nicer results when it's done. Might have to mix up a little bit more, but that's okay, I'm not gonna do it right now. Because I might come up, other spots might come up as well when I'm sanding, so I can always hit it then. Okay, let me get the vacuum set up and we'll start knocking down the sides of this with uh, 180 grit. Okay, I am set up. I'm going to sand for a couple minutes, then I'll turn the camera off and sand down the whole cabinet. Then we'll come back and take a look at it. Um, before I start sanding, I want to show you, see if I can show you some of the imperfections up close. I did a really good job and I put a lot of primer on it, but if you look up close, see that or not. See how that's kind of rough? That texture there is a little rough. And that, if you leave it like that, that's gonna show through your artwork. You know, it's just not gonna look good. It's, it's real hard to see. Okay, you can see like some scratches and stuff that were clearly missed. But when I sand this primer down, those should be gone. And um, this is where maybe a little body filler didn't get feathered out enough. So when I sand a primer, that'll take care of that. And that's just the small stuff that I see that most people probably don't see and don't really care about, but I just try to do the best job I can on everything I do. Just because I'm doing it, why not do it right, you know? Spend that extra little bit of time. And uh, another thing is, is don't, I'm using 180 grit here on my DA. Uh, don't be stingy with your sandpaper. Don't try to sand the whole entire cabinet with one piece of sandpaper. Your sandpaper gets dull. Once it starts getting dull, it's not cutting through the surface anymore. You're kind of gliding over top of it and you're, you're not doing anything. You're just wasting your time at that point. What I like to do is use one piece of sandpaper per side. One for the side, one for the other side, one for the front, and then I'll use leftover pieces for the top and back because it's the top and back and it doesn't matter as much. Also, if you're using a DA sander, an air powered one or a electric one that you plug in, try to keep your sander flat. Don't, don't go on an angle like this. As soon as you do that, you start digging into the edge of your cabinet, you'll dig in and you'll leave divots. So you want to leave it as flat as possible and wear a mask too. Now you can see how I just barely hit it with a sander now you can see all that texture and look at that all that stuff would show through your artwork if you don't get rid of it
see that took probably two minutes or less and I already have half of the set half of one side sanded down so it shouldn't take you really more than about a half an hour to sand the whole cabinet so I'm going to turn this off get to it get this sanded down we're going to come back and look at it and see if we find any little imperfections we'll fill them in sand those down we'll get it in the spray booth we'll put two coats of primer on it and we'll dry it at 100 120 degrees again and let it sit overnight um, as you can see this was that one imperfection that looked like crap i got it it's out it's no longer there but we broke through just a tiny bit to the particle board not a problem we're putting more primer over top if you leave stuff like this let's say the sides of the cabinet get a partial artwork okay and it only comes up to here if you leave that and you paint over that that's going to take the paint differently than it is on the primer. You will see that in your paint job. So you wanna make sure that you always cover those things like that up. So, all right, I'm gonna get back to sanding. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm about 20 minutes into it so far. I have just about everything sanded. Um, there's a couple little nicks I'll have to touch up. Um, now I'm working on the hand sanding parts. You will have to hand sand. No matter what you do, there's always that spot where your sander's not going to get into. Um, like these edges on both sides, here and on that side. Um, so what I did was I put some 180 grit on my sanding block here. And we're just going to go at it and smooth this out. See how rough that, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but you can see how rough that is. That's all going to show through your paint job unless you get that smooth. So by sanding it and repriming it, we're going to achieve a really smooth surface. Now keep in mind, this Paperboy cabinet originally had vinyl over all this. Okay, I peeled it off because it was flaking away at all the edges. And as soon as you grab the little piece, it would rip real high up so i wanted to take it all off because i didn't want to run the risk of me doing body work up to it and then uh painting it and then all of a sudden it letting go right there at that edge where i did the body work up to it and then uh i gotta fix it so i just stripped it down to the bare wood but now i'm dealing with all the imperfections from the bare wood so i'm just gonna sit here now and sand both sides like this getting all the way into the corner with my sandpaper and then I'll come this way and get into the corner and then just keep going until you get it to where you want it and it's okay if I hit wood because I'm going to put two more coats of primer on but already with only Less than a minute of sanding. I've already got almost it all out. I got a couple left here. Now, if I don't get them all out, when I put those two more coats of primer on there, that'll take care of the rest of it. So I'm gonna get these sanded now. I gotta get up in here still. Um, there's a couple pits right here, right along here I need to fill. One on that side so far. So there's a few, and I gotta clean this out right here. I have some fiberglass resin that had dripped when I was fixing those sides over there, it dripped and it sat right in the corner, here, here, and here. So I need to fix that up. So, all right, I'm gonna continue to sand. I gotta tilt the camera down here so I can turn it off and I'll be back. Okay, cabinet is all sanded down. I fixed up a couple little spots. There was one down there, a couple on the front. Um, I wanna do one more thing before I blow this cabinet off. I'm gonna take my Use piece of 180 grit sandpaper that's pretty worn down and I'm going to just take it on a slight angle and just ease these edges, okay? The reason for doing that is it keeps it from chipping in the future and it makes the artwork go around the corner easier because like I said in one of the last videos, I like to wrap my artwork just past the T-molding slot and then hammer on the T-molding. And what that does is keeps the uh, edge of the vinyl down so it doesn't peel in the future. Um, so by easing this edge just a little bit, it gets rid of that sharpness so that when you roll that vinyl around there, you don't crack it. 
or cut it, I should say, probably a better word for it. So I'm just going real lightly. One pass, two passes is all you need. So I'm gonna go around and hit all the edges like that, get it blown off. Then we're gonna get this in the spray booth and we're gonna put the last two coats of primer on it. Finish line is close as far as getting the body work and paint done on it. It's in the spray booth, guys. I haven't, I gotta turn the heater on still. I've been running the spray booth off and on all day today. As you can see, the parts just piling up. Floor's a little dusty and oversprayed. That's fine, it'll wash off. But I haven't turned the heater on yet and it's still 80 degrees in here. Um, but I have to turn the heater on because it's getting down to about 50 outside. And if I don't turn the heater on, as soon as those fans turn on, it's gonna suck every bit of heat out of here. So I'm gonna turn the heater on. We are gonna use wax and grease remover on this cabinet now because we have primer on it. So I wanna wax and grease remover it down and then we're gonna put two coats of primer on. Also, I need to put two coats of primer on this piece. This is the board that covers where the gas pedals were to go if it was the racing game that goes in this cabinet. Um, I mixed up my 2K primer again. I'm gonna get that mixed up in the cup. We'll go over it again. I try to go over it on every video. I know it's people that watch every video are probably sick of seeing that, but for the people that just start watching videos, it's nice to show what I'm doing. So that's why I repeat this stuff. So let me get set up, get the heater going out there. We're gonna wax and grease remover this down. Then we're gonna come in here and get some primer mixed up. Let me show you what I use. It's always in this pump container and I don't think I've ever really showed anybody what I use. I use Prepsol, Prepol. Um, it's a wax and grease remover. You can buy it right on Amazon. I think that's where I bought it the last couple times because it seemed to be the cheapest. It's not cheap anymore. This stuff used to be $15, $20 a gallon. I think it's $30, $40 a gallon now, but you'll get a long use out of it. You don't have to have a pump sprayer. You can just take some out, pour it onto a rag and wipe the cabinet down with one rag and then use another rag to dry it. But we use, I like to use a pump sprayer because I like to put it on heavy, let it run down the cabinet a little bit. As it runs down the cabinet, it's um, taking the dust and dirt out of the sanding marks. So let's go out there and wipe this down. I'm not worried about wiping the back of the top down. The sides I had my hands on, the front I had my hands on. The top I never really touched because it was just a sander. The main reason why I do this is just to make sure you get your oil and grease off of there from your hands. See, I wet it down really good. And I'm going to go on this side real quick and wet this down. Then I'll come back on that side and I'll start wiping it down. That gives it a minute or a little bit of time to start uh, working that dirt out of your sanding parts. These are uh, lint-free towels. This is what I use for painting cars. Um, obviously, we don't have to be as critical with an arcade cabinet as a car. I like to try to wipe back and forth. I try not to go back up to what I wiped unless I have a new towel. If you have a second towel, wipe it again. I'm not going to tack rag this off because uh, it's just primer. That residue that came out of the sanding marks. If you don't get that off the cabinet, you um, run the risk of not having your paint bond well or your primer because it's bonding to dust, not to the actual product itself. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe the other side down and we're going to mix up some primer. All right, I saved these rags because I use them for cleaning up wiping paint spills or anything else like that down. Don't mind all the cans on the counter. I have some more of these uh, explosion proof cabinets. I just purchased them a couple weeks ago. They're in the back shop right now waiting for me to get that next bay done. Once I get that next bay done, I'm gonna put them right outside this door on the concrete and put all this extra product in there. I started buying uh, everything by the case because it's cheaper for me to buy a case of everything than it is for me to buy individually and ship it. Plus, if I buy a case, like this clear coat's coming from Florida, 
and the company I'm using to get this clear coat from, this is for cars, I don't use it on cabinets because it's shiny, but um, this clear coat's coming from a company out of Florida, and because I'm buying large quantities of it now, they're not charging me shipping on any of it. So even multiple boxes are not charging me shipping. So that there alone is a savings. Plus, they're knocking down the price of each unit because I'm buying so much at one time. So it works out pretty good. So I just place a big order every so often. And when I get down to like a gallon or two, I'll place another order so that I always have it, have it here because I'm obviously doing a lot more cars and arcade games now than I was in the past. So our primer's mixed up. This is a Summit 2K primer. Um, I like this stuff. I've had really good luck with it over the past probably eight, 10 years I've been using it. Maybe a little less than that. Um, you can get the gallon of primer. They sell it in gray. They sell it in buff color, which is like a tan, like a yellowish tan color. And they sell it in black, I believe. They might even sell it in white, I'm not sure. Um, but you can get a gallon of this with a quarter hardener. So the gallon requires a quarter hardener. So that right there gives you a gallon and a quart sprayable. I always put some reducer in it. I do that so that it sprays out better, thins it a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to spray, lays it down a little smoother, not as textured. So imagine using a roller and it leaves that texture. Well, that's what happens if you just run these two products without some reducer. When you spray it, it kind of has that roller texture to it, orange peel. Um, by adding some reducer, it thins it out a little bit. Um, but you don't really want to go over 20% reducer. 10% usually industry standards. They don't really recommend over 10%. I've never had a problem going 20%, so I usually go 20%. So we're going to mix up a full cup here. This is my third time spraying primer today. And now I'm sure you guys understand why I use these disposable sleeves in my cups because if I were to rinse out cups, those regular mixing cups, three times a day with lacquer thinner, um, wash thinner, and I did it, you know, and I'm using the spray booth two, three times a day, every day of the week, it's gonna get pretty expensive on thinner. And I'm gonna have a bunch of old paint with thinner in it that I need to dispose of, which you have to pay to dispose of it. So by using these cups, if there's a little bit left in the bottom, it dries out. Once it dries out, you can throw it in the garbage. So that's why I use this, but I'm using this a lot. You know, for somebody that's just doing an arcade cabinet, maybe two a year, um, get the regular cups. Don't waste your money on this stuff. You don't need this stuff. Um, you know, and not everybody's gonna have an air compressor, air hoses and all that stuff to go and paint their cabinet like I am, and I get that. Um, you can do a couple different things. You can use a roller, you can use a foam roller. I've used a foam roller and had some pretty good success with it. You can also um, go to Harbor Freight or Lowe's or Home Depot and buy yourself a um, spray gun. Um, what do they call those? Boy, I can't think of it. It's more for home use, but you can use it for automotive and I, turbine. I think it's called a turbine spray gun. You can use one of those. Um, those work good. I've actually used one. I painted a car with one of those probably 20 years ago. And believe it or not, it turned out really good. Um, one of my buddies was a, uh, a painter. I gotta get more reducer out. He was a house painter and he, and he kept telling me, you gotta try this sprayer, you gotta try this sprayer. So I painted his car for him and I tried the sprayer and it actually worked really well. I was pretty impressed with it. Let me go grab some more reducer real quick. I probably should have been using this can the whole time. This is a new can. I just kind of dented it in by accident. I was using a slow reducer. This medium reducer is a little bit better for the uh, primer because it dries quicker. Also, that's another thing. If you guys are doing this in your garage and it's only like 50 or 60 degrees out, this is medium temperature. Okay, this is recommended for 70 to 80 degree temperatures, and that's what I'm spraying in. Um, if you use a slow temperature, which I use for all my clear coats and everything else, because if you're putting clear on your arcade cabinet, and let's say you want it to be shiny and you want it to be smooth as possible, and it's 90 degrees in your garage, you want to use a slow hardener. 
what that's going to do is slow the hardening process up, which is going to give your clear more time to flow out. As it flows out, it flattens out. So, um, but slow, slow is is um, 80 degrees plus. But let's say you're in a 40 or 50 degree garage, you want to get a fast hardener. Fast activator is going to be under 70 degrees. I think it's 50 to 70 degrees temperature. I don't know that I have any. I can't really use that in a spray booth with the air movement and everything. It dries too quick. But um, that's just something to know. You know, all this stuff is readily available online. If you go online and you want to try this primer, you have a spray gun or an air compressor and you want to buy a Harbor Freight spray gun, I use a Harbor Freight spray gun to spray the primer because when it goes bad, I just throw it away because it's like a $60 gun. But I've had it for over a year and it's still working. But anyways, if you go on Summit and you put a 2K urethane primer in your cart, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you a recommendation for other things that you need to go with this, which will be the activator. And like I have said, they have slow, medium, and fast. Um, if you're just doing it in your garage, uh, I would probably recommend the fast because you're not going to have the air movement. And even if it's 80 degrees, you're going to be fine with the fast. So I would just use the fast dry, and I would use I use the medium reducer. That seems to be a little bit better of an overall reducer. So let me quit talking here and get this mixed up, and we will go out there and get the first coat on. I'll probably just put the first coat on on camera, and then uh, I always shut my eyes when I open this because I had a splatter in my eye one time and it does not feel good. So I always shut my eyes and I'm pulling that off. But anyways, I'll put the first coat on and then on the camera and then I'll put the second one on off camera Then we'll come back and take a look at it. We'll take a real close look at the cabinet and see exactly how it looks and how smooth it looks and all that. So I'm gonna sit here and stir this for a couple minutes. Then I'll get the camera set up out there and we're gonna get the first coat put on. I gotta turn the fans on.
Okay, last coat is on. We'll let that dry for a couple minutes and we'll go take a look at it. Um, if you guys are using spray paint, automotive paint, keep yourself a respirator. Um, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. This stuff will sit in your lungs for a while before your body can get it out of there. And I don't even know if it'll get it all out of your lungs, to be honest with you. These products have a hardener in it, so you don't really want to breathe in hardener. So I always recommend getting a good respirator. You can buy them at Home Depot or Lowe's for like 30, 40 bucks. Um, you can get them cheaper at Harbor Freight. If you're not doing a ton of it, you can use Harbor Freight ones. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, keep it in a Ziploc bag when you're not using it. It'll make the filters last longer. If you buy a good set of them, you can uh, just replace the filters, the outer filters and the canister inside. Um, so that's something good to know. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, feel free to send me a message. I pretty much respond to every single one. I read every one. Um, if uh, sometimes it'll be a message and it won't really uh, require like for me to respond back, I'll at least give you a thumbs up, let you know I read it. So if anybody has any questions about any of this stuff, thinking about using it, you know, I'm more than willing to uh, answer any questions you guys have or help you find products or anything like that. So let me uh, clean this spray gun a little bit more, let that dry for a couple more minutes, and we'll go take a look at it, and that's gonna end this video. All right, let's go take a look at it. It's been drying for about 10 minutes now. Fans are off, but the heat's been on. Laid out really smooth. As you can see, it is really smooth. And look at these edges, perfectly sharp. Not sharp, but perfectly slightly edged it over whatever the heck you want to call it but this is going to paint up really nice I'm going to let it uh, heat up a little bit more in here it's uh, just under 100 degrees right now so I'm going to, have to probably let it get to about 120 to let it fully cure um, I put three heavy coats on here because I forgot to do it on the first time so I want to paint that when I paint this now uh, let me go back my uh, tripod but anyways um, what I'm gonna do is the back doors for all three of these cabinets I'm just gonna end up doing um, afterwards I want to get the main cabinets done at least the uh, I'll probably do the uh, Pac-Man one when I paint the cabinet because that's gonna be blue um, but the paper boy and the pole position i'll do those doors separately tomorrow i plan on doing probably two videos again i'm gonna do a video on working on the metal parts for the um pole position and probably the plastic bezel that goes around the steering and then i'm going to work on the metal parts for the uh paper boy so it'd be nice to get both of those parts uh prepped and maybe primered I don't think I need to primer the the coin doors on the paper boy. I got to look at them. I know I did some sandblasting on some of those parts when I was testing out some new sand on the sand blaster. So I'll look at that tomorrow. But other than that, guys, will be probably one or two videos coming tomorrow. Hopefully you guys are liking all these videos. I'm just trying to knock this stuff out and get it out of here. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, share, hit the thumbs up button. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Um, other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys.